जय श्री माता जी उपस्थित सहयोगी भाई बहनों का सामूहिक ध्यान सत्र में सहर्ष स्वागत है चित्त को सहस्त्रार में रखते हुए सामूहिक बंधन तीन महामंत्र एवं श्री गणेश मंत्र धीरे से चित्त को सहस्त्रार पर ले जाएंगे यहाँ पर श्री माता जी से प्रार्थना करते हैं श्री माता जी कृपा करके हमें हमारा आत्म साक्षात्कार प्रदान कीजिए हमारे आत्म साक्षात्कार को दृढ़ कर दीजिए 
आज के इस ध्यान में हमें निर्विचारिता प्रदान कीजिए श्री माता जी की अमृतवाणी ग्रहण करेंगे एट अ वेरी क्रुशियल टाइम वी आर डूइंग दैट बिकॉज देर आर सम एंटी क्राइस्ट हु हैव बिकम इन चार्ज ऑफ द क्रिश्चियन रिलीजन एंड आर टॉकिंग अगेंस्ट द बर्थ ऑफ क्राइस्ट they have no authority they are not realized souls they have no idea of the divine nothing and they are saying that it is all falsehood that she was not a virgin and that christ was not born that way 
who told them, did Gabriel came, come and told them what right they have got to talk these things. So because they are antichrist, now they have become in charge of Christianity. Even Pope is like that. So in Satya Yoga they will be all exposed, have to be exposed. But some people who are here can write to this man to ask, what is your authority to say? Have you felt the all-pervading power of God's love? Have you any divinity in you to challenge Christ like that? There must be some incarnations of Paul, perhaps. They cannot understand divine. They don't know what divine can do. They have no idea at all how miraculous it is. You all have felt the blessings of the divine. You all know that it is a miracle. Every time there's a miracle produced. I <laughs> will narrate one simple example. In the Navratri Puja, we had some photographs. And behind the photograph, some sort of a scene came, which I was wondering, what is this supposed to be? The scene was that the Surya, was moving a curtain. Eyes of the, there were eyes for the Surya's mouth, nose, and he was smiling and moving a curtain like that. I said, what is this? What is this indicative in the Navratri Puja? But when I went to Moscow, I was surprised that they had painted painted the background just like this. Exactly like this there was the background. So Navratri Puja, which took at least one and a half month before, the Param Chaitanya painted there. It's very remarkable how things work out miraculously. And there are thousand and one miracles you can talk about. When we were in the aeroplane going to Moscow, they said the temperature is minus 20. We got down, they said it is minus 50. Next morning, they said it is coming down very fast. It's touching about minus 12. And Afternoon they said, it is minus four. But next day it was plus ten. I mean, as the time passes, it has to be cooler and cooler. This time my husband was going to Moscow. He says, very cold there, now minus twenty. He sent word that, I said, don't worry, it will put it right. He said, when he arrived, it was only minus two. So all these things show that all the elements are helping us. All the other problems, minor, big, anything gets solved. In no time, you are sometimes amazed how things are done. So then they question, then why Christ had to be crucified? Why could you not save Him from crucifixion? He was crucified because that was to be done in his case, that he had to pass through the Agya, he had to establish himself in Agya, and the, the cross, he had to pass through that. So the message of his life is not never the cross, but the message is his resurrection. He resurrected, that was one of the things he did very great, so that now you can be resurrected also. In every incarnation in the evolution, every incarnation did something very, very unique. At the end of it, Christ did the resurrection part. And He did it because He had to die. Otherwise, how can you resurrect yourself? 
So there are lots of things which look mythical, which are not. Tomorrow they say that Christ never resurrected himself. And actually he died later on in Kashmir. There's a proof of it. But still the people don't want to believe. And they just wanted to spread Christianity because they know that if you have majority of people, then they can rule. The same trick now is tried by politicians. But this kind of a majority is not going to bring any solace or any benevolence for people. Christ's mother herself has been challenged by this man and has said all kinds of nonsense about her. On the contrary, Muhammad Sahib in Quran says, nobody should challenge the chastity of the Holy Mother, of Christ's Mother. He has respected. While there is no respect shown to Mother Mary in the Bible, no respect, she is called a woman, because of Paul, who was a horrible antichrist who came over who took over Christianity, tried to spread Christianity and with that what he wanted to put his own importance and he used Peter who was the worst possible disciple of Christ, whom Christ has told that Satan will take you over. So now they are telling people that it's impossible, how can it be that Christ was born to a virgin. We Indians worship Sri Ganesh. Sri Ganesh is the same as Christ. And we believe that the mother herself created the child without as a virgin, as a Gauri. Not only believe, but we it's our faith. While the faith in the West is all rationality, they go on thinking like that and they go on producing yarn of falsehood. What was the need for newspapers to publish this nonsense of this Dharam fellow? And then he was honoured, honoured by the Archbishop of Canterbury, who is another Antichrist. He honoured him and just after that, that church where he was honoured was completely burnt by Vishnu Maya. She was looming around it for one hour and then she burnt it completely. Only the lower portion was left because there were also very beautiful paintings maybe. Now the stupid fools are saying that it is God's grace on us that they saved us from this Vishnu Maya, the lower portion of it. But why did it burn? So you have to understand that rationality can never make you understand divinity, can never. It is so limited, so conditioned, full of ego. How can the rationality tell you what is the truth about Christ's life? But we have proved also Scientifically. So you must be knowing that I told them that if you see from right to the left, you see a swastika because of carbon, the way it is made. If you see the carbon atom, you see a swastika from left to right. We have made a big model out of it. And then you put it in another way, means you see it from left to the right, then you see Omkara, no doubt. And then you see from down below, you say Alpha and Omega. Christ has said it, that I am the Alpha and the Omega. At that time I didn't know if these symbols were there or not. Whatever it is, he did say, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Also it has another meaning, that I am the beginning, I am the end. But Alpha and Omega, the way he said it, you can see it clearly, symbolically, clearly, if you see it from down upward. 
So the Omkara on one side, Swastika on another side, join together when they ascend and incarnate, they become Alpha and Omega. But all this doesn't go into the heads of these Antichrists, they are all Antichrist. And they cannot understand what divinity can do. You got your realization, your second birth. Just sitting here, how did you manage? How did you get your second birth? And the way these people talk is definitely for their doom, for their complete destruction. It's too much of daring, as you know that Sri Ganesha is a very powerful deity, same Christ. He has said, if you say anything against the Holy Ghost, I will not tolerate. And also against Christ, I will not tolerate. A word even. Only on that point I'll have to see to it that all these horrible people should be destroyed completely. On this occasion of his birthday, we have to realize that Christ was born from the same things as Sri Ganesh. So he was wisdom, source of wisdom. He said few things because they didn't allow him to live long. At the most three of three and a half years, he could lecture to people. But whatever he said is so truthful, so correct and so wise. Of course, they might have tried to dabble with that, but still lots of truths are left in the Bible, no doubt about it. And his lifetime he spent in just telling them what is the truth is. He is the first one who talked so clearly about God. On his level we have three other people in the area of Tapa, which is here. One is Buddha, another is Mahavira. Now both Buddha and Mahavira were born at a time when they saw that ritualism is taking place, the reality. So they said, we will not talk of God, Anishwarvat. We will not talk of God, first we will only talk about the Chaitanya. That everybody did, even the guru of Janaka, who was Ashtavakra, only talked about the vibrations. Even Nanaka did that. When Namadeva went down to Punjab, he told him, don't talk about God, don't talk about Hari, better talk about Paramachaitanya first of all, because one can reach only Paramachaitanya to begin with and then they will say, where is God after all? But it's only Christ who talked about God at that time, when it was more that they didn't want to talk about God Almighty. He was a daring person, they were never afraid of anything, no doubt. But his childhood has not been described anywhere, which is very sad. We have got the descript beautiful description of Sri Krishna's childhood, and also Sri Rama's childhood, except that once he was in argument with some Pharisee, Pharisees and how clever he was and they were all flabbergasted at his uh, discussion. That's all, nothing more. But later on, though they had showed no regard for Mary, the people couldn't help it. They said, there has to be some Devi, some Goddess, how can Christ take birth from her? So they call, named her Madonna, and that's how this Mother Mary was called as Madonna, means maiden, means virgin. And this Madonna was then started uh, occupying the place of uh, churches everywhere, and people regarded her as a as a goddess. 
It is the people who said, not in the Bible, not in the Christianity. But the people started calling her Madonna. And from that Madonna level, that people started seeing the mother and the motherhood. She was Mahalakshmi, we know that very well. And we worship her as Mahalakshmi. She was Radha. Radha also had a son and he was like an egg. And the half of the egg was Christ and half of the egg was Sri Ganesh. But when this child was born, he started crying for his father. Father was Sri Krishna. It's in the, if you read, read Devi Mahatma, it is there. So always he puts his hands like this towards his father. So one is, as you know, is Sri Krishna's finger, another is Vishnu's. And she was Radha. Ra means energy, Dha means the one who has sustained the energy. And she is the one who called him Jesus. Actually, in the Hebrew, it is Yesu. And also in the, thank God I read Bible in Marathi, which was directly translated from Hebrew. Yesu is the name. Yesu is the name of the mother of Christ, uh, mother of Sri Krishna. Yesu means, as we call her, Jesu or Yesu from Jasoda or Ishoda. From that she called him. And Christ word comes from Krishna. So she called him Christ and Yesu or Jesus. We to call Yashoda sometimes Jesu or Yesu. So she called him by that name. And that is how she put the link for us to understand how close he was to Sri Krishna. Sri Krishna came only, incarnated only in India because he would have been uh, too lenient a person to be incarnated in America. As it is, they have no uh, limitations, they have no maryadas, they have no idea of dharma, they are very great adharmis. So, only a person like Christ, who is absolutely pure, wise and does not believe in the Leela part of Sri Krishna. Sri Krishna said that this is all Leela to overcome the strictness of Sri Rama. But Christ did not say so. And despite that, all over wherever Christianity is practiced, they think it's all Leela. Adharma is Leela. Whatever wrong we do is Leela. After all, all innocent. It's surprising. Their logic is so funny. I have never been able to understand their logic. All self-destructive, nonsensical logic they have. So, for us Indians, we should know that we have full idea of Dharma. We know what is wrong and what is good. But more credit I would give to Christians who are from such countries where they have no idea of Kundalini, have come up so much and have become such great surgeries. Now is the blessing of God. Because they were genuine, they were sincere, it is Christ who brought them to Sahaja Yoga. Without Him, it would not have been possible. Here, Sri Ganesha is just a symbol sort of a thing. He resides in the stones. But there, He incarnated and He told people what His Dharma is, which they are supposed to follow, but they never follow. They never follow. They are extremely money-oriented people. It's very surprising what things they have done in the name of God. The most symbolic thing is his birth. He was born in a manger. Just imagine in a manger, full of straws assembled together, 
this child was born, where there were other animals used to be. See the way this great incarnation took birth. He was not king, he was not a big uh, rich man. He was born as a very poor person and in a place which is something very much below the human standard. This message is that you don't need palaces, you don't need huge places to be born, you can be born anywhere if you are a pure spirit. If you are Christ, such a great personality was born like that. Now the other way now, people go, they are extremely money-oriented, very materialistic, I mean to such a limit that you can't understand what are they up to. They are destroying themselves with whatever money they have made. They have no sense, they have no proportion. This is what is happening in the West. And we are trying to follow them also. We are trying to follow their destructive methods and we are trying to think that we are very advanced. Advanced towards doom, that's what they are. We have to be very careful with our children, with our relations, that we don't go to their dirty things and take to their dirty uh, ways which they have created in the name of God, in the name of God. Now this group that we have here is quite a large group and uh, we are Sajogis, we are all blessed people, we know what is divinity is and we know what Christ is. Whether you are born a Hindu or anything makes no difference because Christ is universal. He is the support of the universe. That's what is written in Devi Mahatma. Ki he will be the support of the universe. So one has to understand that we should never ridicule anybody if he is following Christ and that we should worship him with the same affection, with the same devotion with the same surrendering as we worship Sri Ganesh. Because I don't think Christians have any faith about Christ, no faith. They are, we believe in Christ, we believe in Christ, you cure my father, do this, do that. But a Sahaja Yogi's faith works. Your faith is enlightened faith and it works. But you must have faith in yourself, in Sahaja Yoga and in the life you are leading. Unless and until this happens to you, you shouldn't call yourself a Sahaja Yoga. I see still there are people on the periphery. Then you don't know what to do about it, you don't understand uh, in a mental way, but you just float into the immense love of God and you want to give this love to others. But still, materialism becomes subtler with some people, they are still materialistic. They are materialistic in the sense they still think of earning uh, in a bad way some money or something, maybe that is not so common. But I feel they are now suddenly started getting attached to their children. This attachment is very wrong. You see, children belong to Sahaja Yoga, you have no right on them because they straight away wanted children to come back home and not to come to Ganpati Pure. I mean, they are the children of Sahaja Yoga. They have to come to Ganpati Pure, no question. But they wanted to take away their children directly. Everything is there directly done. It's not, children are not here for that. They are here to grow in Sahaja Yoga. If you don't want your children to grow in such a way, better take them away. But this is not the way to behave arbitrarily, to take the children away from the school when everybody is coming to Ganpati Pura. And I'm sure children don't like it. They would love to be here. So the materialism in the sense of children, also saving money part, is working out. 
And this is something shows the materialism which Christ never, never clung to. He never wanted it. This one we have to understand. To play, pay respect to Christ, the best thing is to get out of these materialistic ideas. All right, you have materialistic ideas as far as uh, I don't say that you don't go to Himalayas, I don't say that you go to, um, you, uh, you practice asceticism, I don't say take away, uh, give up your children like Buddha did, nothing of the kind. But your detachment should work. This, uh, say a bird is there, uh, flying over the ocean of water. It will never drink the water of the ocean because it is saltish. You are there, you are in this world, but you must develop your detachment. In the beginning it was all right, my father is sick, my mother is sick, my child is like this, all this nonsense was all right, but not now. Now the speed of Sahaja Yoga is very fast and those who will be left behind will be left behind. So be careful, do not get entangled into these materialistic ideas. And for Indians especially, they don't like to stay in ashrams. Indians want to have their homes so they can dominate their wives, have their special type of food, this, that, and uh, work out all their ugly tastes uh, all the time. I would say that must be the reason people must have said that Indians must fast to get rid of their tongues, desires. They will even when fast think about food, what's the use? Christ fasted for forty days and Satan asked him that you should give up your fast and do this and do that. He never listened. So materialism works out in two types. First of all, in the West now is the materialism is my house, my wife, my children. And in the East is what sort of a food I eat, what sort of a house I should have, what sort of a family I should have. All these things are still lingering. As your ascent has become subtler, they are also becoming subtler and subtler and they are holding you back. There are all kinds of things. For example, I know of Sahaja Yogis who want to make business out of Sahaja Yoga. There are. Like these people here outside, they want to sell their things to us and uh, to make money out of us. There was a demand that there were no saris. I said, all right, take saris. But you are not to buy from outside. Also they will go to some shop here and have something to drink or something to eat and then suffer from something. What is the need? Can you not control your thirst? Can you not control your appetite? It's very easy. Did He not do it? Christ did it. You have come here to worship Him. Try to control these things, they are very important. And once it happens, it doesn't matter if you get food, doesn't matter if you don't get some good place to live in. You can live anywhere, anywhere. As far as I'm concerned, you know that very well. I have no demands, I have… I mean, my body doesn't demand anything. It's such a good body, it never demands. And that's why I've seen that I never feel tired. I'm here with you and in the same way I'm anywhere. If you make me sleep here, I can sleep the whole night. My body never says anything. On the contrary, I've seen the experience is very different. Once I traveled by train, I think from uh, Pune to Hyderabad or something, and the train, I was on the wheel and the thing was it's jumpy, jumpy, jumpy all that. And slipped off and what I was thinking, I was feeling that I'm going from one star to another star moving from the whole universe. I never felt the jump, I felt the other way now. 
that the whole thing is going, the body is moving from this star to that star, from there to that. I mean, somebody would be absolutely angry for a thing like that. On the contrary, I was enjoying nice jumping from here to there to going to this star and to that star and moving from one place to another. It was very interesting. So the reaction is very different. Reaction is different. If there is a crisis, suddenly I become thoughtless, completely thoughtless. And a kind of a tremendous peace starts pouring out of me, if there is a crisis. And this is what you all can achieve, very simply, if you get detached. See, I have children, I have grandchildren, I never telephone to them, I am not bothered. If they telephone, well and good. I never telephone to my husband also. I always think that it's a waste of time of telephoning here and telephoning. I have got all telephones within myself. I know everybody is all right. So why to telephone to them? But unless and until you develop that kind of status, it won't. Then another thing I have noticed about Sahaja Yogi is that they become suddenly very violent and there are reports that some people were hit. That's not being a Sahaja I've never raised my hand against even my own children. It's not allowed. Nobody has to raise the hand or touch somebody's body to be violent. It's absolutely such a person will fall very da deep down into Sahaja Yoga without doing anything. You're not to get angry, you're not to shout. Nothing of the kind is going to help you. You have to be absolutely peaceful, calm, compassionate. If there is a wrong type of a man, just tell me, I'll manage. You don't have to handle such situations and misbehave because you are still attached and that attachment will pull you down. So be careful not to be angry. Look at Christ. He was angry with the people who were selling things near the church. In a, that time it was not the church but they call it a tabernacle. And he was very angry that in the temple of God these people are selling things outside. And he took a big hunter and hit them hard. But he was Christ. But at the same time, when he was crucified, he said, Oh God, my Father, please forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. This is what is, uh, one has to understand from him, his character, how forgiving, how loving he was how he looked after the people, how he helped people for their emancipation. In those days of complete chaos and uh, uh, anarchy, he stood up and talked about truth and about such things like spirit, like ascent. I mean, they were all blind people, they didn't know what it was he was talking about. And he talked about it. There's a lot of myths that exist in the Bible and one of them is that when the resurrection time will come, your bodies will come out of your graves. It is not only with Christianity but also with the Muslims and also for the Jews. Now think of it, after so many years, what remains in the uh, in the graves, few bones, and these few bones, if they come out, how can you give them realization? <laughs> Think of it. It's a big myth. One should understand, logically it's not proper. So what is the thing is, I must say, Naladamanti uh in the Indian philosophy, they have given a clear-cut idea that when this Kali Yuga will come, so many great seekers who are seeking God in the hills and dales, mountains will be born again and they will be given their Self-realization. Their Kundalini will be awakened. This is what is said and that seems to be a very logical thing because we are doing that. And today's population growth is also because so many have taken birth. I don't know how many will get their Self-realization, how many they are going to get it. But those who have got it have to establish themselves, establish themselves. 
and there also I find there's some sort of a very subtle type of attachment with people. So, for the time being, I feel that you should all surrender yourself to the qualities of Christ, which are immense qualities. And the greatest is that He cannot tolerate anything against the Holy Ghost. That is the only time He is going to come out and work it. I tell you, if you are a Sahaja Yogi and if you misbehave, He allows you to some extent. There's one fellow in America wanted to talk to me on the telephone and discuss about Sahaja Yoga. But he found me a bit too much for him, perhaps, and he started talking to Sahaja Yogis and he, wouldn't, uh, he didn't take talk to me. And everybody was very angry. I said, forget it. The other day I received a message that he was doing a program, same time, and he collapsed because he got paralysis. So he's not a surgeon. I am not responsible. But if somebody calls me a mother, then the Param Chaitanya respects that. And you have no business to hit anybody or to talk to anyone rudely in any manner, those who are surgeons. Of course, if you want to tell somebody off, there are ways uh, this should be done like a Sahaja Yoga way and not like the violent things. It's very, very wrong and I'm very upset to hear that people suddenly become violent even now in Sahaja Yoga. This comes from liver, I know. You can go in for your liver treatment, improve yourself, but don't think that you can get away with it. You cannot. It's better such people fast for two days and punish themselves. Temper is the worst thing and Sri Krishna has told that temper is the worst from where everything starts. So we must control our temper and understand that Christ was the embodiment of forgiveness, embodiment. We are worshipping Him today. How He forgave people, those who crucified were not the Jews actually, they were the Romans. The Roman authorities crucified him. But Paul decided that we should try to condemn the Jews, so the Jews have done it. Jews have not done it. And they condemned Jews forever. <coughs> With this kind of a attitude, people hated Jews and they troubled them and they were tortured. The Jews also had a reaction, they are equally the same. So it's not the Jews, because it's never done that you ask a multitude, a magistrate asks the multitude whether you should crucify a thief or this man. It's never done. They have to take their own decisions, it's never done. So this is just to bring a curse on the Jews. This Paul has done the greatest harm. But now, thank God, we have many Jews and we have also a center in Israel. It's working out all over. We have lots of people from Iran who have come to America, who are also Jews and who are also Muslims. They all have taken to Sergio. So it is something that's happening. And also the Sufi people from um, Turkey, I hear, are joining us and also Supi people from India will be able to get them. So thus it will work out and it will work out for everybody's good. But first of all, we should understand how Christ was and how His life was and how He loved the world. He came on this earth to be crucified. He knew He was to be crucified and He did it. The way they have given his picture is not correct. He was a very healthy, hefty, tall person. He had to carry that cross. Those people who paint him uh, like a TB patient should know that they, if they have to carry the cross, can they do it? So all sorts of things they have done to harm his personality, to assassinate his character. But you being Sahaja Yogi should know about Him and must have full respect, full faith in Him. And He is your eldest brother. As Sri Ganesha is, He incarnates as your elder brother. 
He is there to look after you in every trouble, in every kind of uh, turmoil. He is going to help us in every way, all the time, and only way is to surrender, to forgive. That is the quality of Christ we have to imbibe. May God bless you. थोड़ी देर हम निशब्द ध्यान की इसी अवस्था में बैठेंगे ध्यान की इसी अवस्था में शीश झुकाकर श्रीमाता जी से प्रार्थना करते हैं परम पूज्य श्रीमाता जी आज का सामूहिक ध्यान हम आपके श्री चरणों में समर्पित करते हैं आज के ध्यान में आपने हमें निरानंद प्रदान कर हमें चैतन्य से आशीर्वादित किया इसलिए हम आपके हृदय से ऋणी हैं श्री माता जी संपूर्ण विश्व में विश्व निर्मल धर्म प्रस्थापित करने हेतु कृपा कर हमें सहज योग प्रचार प्रसार का शुद्ध एवं प्रभावी माध्यम बनाइए श्री माता जी हमारी सभी प्रार्थनाओं का स्वीकार कर हमें आशीर्वादित करने की कृपा कीजिए परम पूज्य श्री माता जी हम सभी के कोटि कोटि प्रणाम स्वीकार कीजिए जय श्री माता जी सामूहिक बंधन
जय श्री माता जी